Welcome to this special edition of Hannity. Democratic scandals. I'm Janine Pirro in tonight for Sean. The bad news keeps piling up for liberals. The Detroit Free Press, the hometown newspaper of Congressman John Conyers, is now calling for him to resign. This comes as the House Ethics Committee has launched an investigation into Congressman Conyers after he admitted that his office paid out $27,000 in taxpayer money to settle a harassment complaint from a former staffer. And just breaking tonight, according to the Washington Post, a new woman is accusing Congressman Conyers of calling her into his office while he was in his underwear. The woman is also alleging that Conyers harassed and verbally abused her. An attorney for Congressman Conyers is saying that he has no plans to resign. Also tonight, two new women are telling the Huffington Post that Senator Al Franken inappropriately touched them in separate incidents. And a new Politico poll shows that 50 percent of voters think that Senator Franken should resign. This survey was conducted after radio host Leanne Tweeden released this photo showing Franken groping her during a 2006 USO tour. But before, a second woman put out this image where she is alleging that Senator Franken grabbed her behind. Now, despite all those allegations against Congressman Conyers and Senator Franken, Democrats and the media are still defending them. When asked about the allegations against Conyers, Congressman James Clyburn told the New York Times, quote, you can't jump to conclusions with these types of things. For all I know, all of this could be made up. And Senator Maisie Hirono from Hawaii brushed aside calls for Senator Franken's resignation. Take a look. Your colleague, Al Franken, has been accused. Do you think he should resign? I think that that is a distraction to be talking about resignation because what's really at the bottom of this whole issue of sexual harassment is that it is uh, um, pervasive in our culture. The liberal mainstream media is also rushing to Senator Franken's defense. Take a look at this. There's a new report that Senator Al Franken grabbed a, women, a woman's behind at a fair back in 2010. He says he doesn't remember doing it. We're going to start to go after everyone in every power industry for something like a butt slap. I'm worried that there's going to be no one left running anything. Yeah, that may be true. To ask him to resign, I don't know if that's the appropriate response either. I mean, no senator has been asked to resign ever. We've also, I think, unfortunately, slowly slid culturally into, the, into a moment when forgiveness is now married to ideology. Mm -hmm. If you're a conservative and, you know, Bill Clinton, you know, or Al Franken, get him out or get her. Right. He photo took a picture, uh, which his office now says was a joke, uh, that showed him uh, potentially not actually groping, but mock groping her. Joining us now with a reaction are Fox News contributor Charlie Hurt, media reporter for The Hill, Joe Concha, and radio talk show host and Fox News contributor Tammy Bruce. Now, you know, guys, I am actually stunned uh, at, the, at the liberal left's hypocrisy with this. And I, I want to start, uh, and, and I'll start with you, Charlie Hurt, where you've got uh, Maisie Hirono saying that the, the calls for resignation is, is nothing more than a distraction because sexual harassment is pervasive. What's your take on that? Well, clearly, I think that the, de the Democrats are circling the wagons right now. And what, I, and what I find so disturbing about it is it just puts a lie to all of the talk we've heard for years and years from Democrats who claim to be the, the party that sticks up for women, the, the party that, that wants to stamp out this kind of uh, uh, awful, atrocious behavior, and, uh, uh, of course, also accusing people like Mitt Romney of waging some war on yeah. women. They've been talking about this for years. And so uh, as soon as the pox is on their house, 
they're, they, all they want to do is circle the wagons. But, but you know what, Joe? It seemed for a time that the Democrats uh, with Donna Brazil and, and uh, Kirsten Gillibrand were like ready to throw Bill Clinton under the bus. And it seemed like they were now going to take the side of women. Now they're going back to where they were. We've got this Congressman James, uh, James uh, Clyburn from the judiciary saying you can't jump to any conclusions for all I know these women can be making it up. And yet... When Donald Trump, the president, says the same thing about Roy Moore, <laughs> they, they want to crucify the president. On Al Franken, I, I got to say, you ever watch Monday Night Football when Cosell and Gifford were there and yeah. Dandy Don Meredith? And towards the end of the game, when a team looks like it's going to lose and Meredith would start singing, turn out the lights, the party's over. We're now at four accusers, including one, the one from this Huffington Post report. And Huffington Post is not exactly a bad You're talking right about sentiment. Franken, right? We're talking about Franken. Right. Here's the quote from one of the accusers. Only two people have come forward, and people are saying that this is a right-wing conspiracy. She says, it's not. I'm a liberal person. I voted for him after this happened. These are women that were at events, campaign events, for Franken. So when you get to four and you have the, video, the photo evidence with Leanne Tweeden, how can he possibly survive, Judge? Well, not only that, and I, I I want to tell the viewers this. You know, everyone has, has tried to draw a distinction, including the woman, Tammy, who wrote the article, uh, uh, the op-ed piece for the New York Times, sure, right. and then felt guilty that she said Al Franken should resign. But just be before I come to you with the question, here's his so-called apology. Everyone said he apologized. Ergo, he should be forgiven. He says... The first thing I want to do is apologize. I want to apologize to you personally, talking to Leanne. Uh, and he says, I understand how or why you could feel violated by the photo. He does not at any point in time apologize to her for touching her breast, whether it was under uh, uh, the Kevlar vest or not. His hands are on that. He apologizes for taking a photo, nothing more. And her other allegation, keep in mind, is that he forced himself on her with a forced kiss. As somebody who's, who's been violated in that way, I can just tell everyone and who, every woman who's experienced that, that is a sexual assault. And so that is her other allegation. He doesn't even mention that. But, but here's the conundrum, of course. Now that we also know they have paid $17 million out in Congress, uh, that we know this is a problem for, for, for the liberals, for the Democratic Party, if one person resigns, there is going to be no excuse for someone else in the same position not to resign. This is why they can't allow him to do that, because who knows how many seats they would lose. But this also <laughs> goes beyond, it comes down really to the nature of what the Clintons did to this party. They set a tone in the 90s that as long as you're right on the issues, if you speak properly about feminism, and if you're on their side, you have, a, you have free reign. In other words, we're going to sacrifice individual women's lives for the collective. This is an abandoned of women. It is an abandonment of feminism by everyone who's a liberal. And finally, now it's clear. And, and this is this has got to be uh, the thing in which we sweep out part of the swamp. And, and, and you know what, Charles, it, it, what Tammy is saying is so true, because yeah. had we, when this happened with Bill Clinton, instead of saying it's a personal issue right. between Bill and Hillary, and instead talked about the moral core of this country and the power between uh, relationships between women who were vulnerable and men who were in power, we, so many thousands of women uh, wouldn't have suffered. But I want to read something to you uh, where Conyers' attorney is now saying he's not going to resign, and if people were required to resign over allegations, a lot of people would be out of the work in the country, including many members of the House, Senate, and even uh, the President. I don't, I don't agree with the last one, but don't you think we ought to clear out the House and the Senate because for two decades they have spent 17 million of, of yeah. dollars of our money to cover their sexual harassment. They should all be gone. And doesn't this speak to the issue of term limits? Absolutely. And I, and I think that the most one of the most devastating things about the Conyers accusations involves that that latest accusation that uh, you just mentioned, a woman named Melanie Sloan, who's a, a tough lady. She's a liberal. She worked for uh, for Conyers uh, some years back. Um, she's she's used to standing up to people. And she in, in that story that came out this evening, she said that she went to Dick Gephardt and other leaders in the Democratic Party and complained about Conyers, told them with 
the sorts of things that he had done to her and to other staffers, and they all turned a blind eye to it. And so I think there's a lot more questions that need to be asked, and we need to find out a whole lot more about who, uh, who has been along the way that swept this stuff under the rug. And, Great and point. Joe, Joe, what about this 17 million and 264 complaints? Why don't we know who those settlements were against? Because Speaker Ryan needs to say, released the names Aha. of, that that's all that needs I'm to happen. I'm on another mission, Joe. Is that all it's going to take? I would think so, <laughs> right? I mean, we already know the payments were made, right? We already have a number in terms of the people. So obviously, all that takes is the Speaker of the House, I would imagine, to go ahead with that. But, but think about where we are now in this. It, it, it's a revolution, really, that's going on. Ever mm -hmm. since the Weinstein report by Ronan Farrow and all the names since then, the Kevin Spaceys, the Mark Halperins, the Charlie Rose, and I could go on and on with, with folks that maybe people don't know at home but are big names in media. The count for today alone, all right, is two more accusers against Al Franken, one more against John Conyers, and a picture of Representative Joe Barton's genitalia splashed all over the Internet. <laughs> oh, uh, Joe Barton, that one's unbelievable. But, uh, That's one day. Uh, where did that one come from? Let me, let me see. I don't what, want to know what, where that one I came don't from. Know what the, the, <laughs> if I could add that this is part of what's prefaced this is the collapse of the Clinton mafia, if you will, that the Clintons were remained in power. People presumed she would be the president. And there was silence up until that point. Ronan Farrow, oh, I should say Rose McGowan, couldn't get anyone to listen to her. The Clinton framework collapsed. The Democratic Party is clearly collapsing. And all of this kind of false front that held that up and kept people at bay and afraid, now that is gone. You've got the book Shattered. You've got Donna Brazile's book. And now it is, it, now it's, it's free for everyone to speak the truth. This is where the Republicans have to stand up for what they say is right. And they do stand for women. They stand for individual freedom, for us to be able to live our lives freely. The Democrats are destroying women's lives. And yet I'm hearing nothing really organized by the Republican Party taking the lead on this, to be, whether it's Paul Ryan or Mitch McConnell, who's been going after uh, Roy Moore, perhaps appropriately. Where has he been on Franken uh, and and on on Conyers and everyone else? Well, you He's know, Charles, I'm gonna I'm gonna j just kind of jump off what Tammy just said. What what is frightening to me is when Conyers says, uh, "I intend to cooperate with the House investigation," and when Al Franken says, "I will cooperate with the Ethics Investigation Ethics Committee investigation." You know what that tells me? That tells me both of them refusing to resign. That tells me it's the old boys network. One hand washes the other. They're going to pay for each other's sins while women are forced to sit for 90 days or 180 days and then forced to mediate. It's like in domestic violence. They used to say to the women who were being beaten, you know what? You got to work it out with your husband. No, it's a crime. There ain't it's, nothing to work out. Go ahead, yeah, Charlie. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just playing with house money and they're buying time, uh, hoping that the, the fear blows over. And I don't think it, it will. But also, you know, following on w what Tammy was saying, you know, the other thing that we're starting to see right now is we're starting to see these people come out against the Clintons and and yeah. uh, and condemn Bill Clinton for his behavior, condemn Hillary Clinton for her behavior and in, in, in uh, shutting some of these women up. I have very little patience for that. I, I have I, th that takes no guts to walk around the battlefield and shoot the wounded and shoot the people that are already dead. Wh where was Kathleen Sebelius uh, when it mattered, when, th when these people were powerful? Where was Kirsten uh, Gillibrand, the senator from New York, oh. who followed mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton in, in the Senate? Where was she yeah. when these people were powerful? Why didn't you stop them when they were powerful? But now they come out and they act like they want some badge of honor because they're, the, the, you know, they're dumping all over That's them That's such a good point. And, and Joe, I'll, I'll let you expound on it. It's true. It's now all of a sudden, just as Tammy said, it's safe to go after the Clintons. Mm -hmm. And now they're all going to be these, you know, these, these towers of moral uh, yeah. uh, superiority. <laughs> National organization. Organization for Women said in the 90s they couldn't, quote, responsibly comment on the charges leveled against Bill Clinton. And they questioned whether the president was a womanizer or a sexual predator. That was the way it was presented. And the narrative was bought by the media at that time, which the media at that time was only ABC, CBS, NBC, Washington Post, New York Times. Fox News was only in its infancy. There was right. no Internet in terms of Internet news. There was no conservative media. You know what Bill Clinton's approval rating was? Because everybody did buy the narrative that the women that were 
accusing him were crazy and opportunistic. 73 percent when he left office. And you he know, wouldn't remotely survive. We now. owe them all an apology. Last word, I, I was the president of L.A. now. This is where my split with them began because I knew that he was a predator. I said so. Many of us resisted this argument to, to cast him as just some kind of good old boy who loved women. We knew he wasn't. And certainly conservatives knew he wasn't. This is the change. It's not like suddenly there's some revelation or epiphany. Good people knew what was happening then. They know what's happening now. But what do you say, you know, when I called the Clinton Foundation an organized criminal enterprise, I really didn't know how profound that was, not because I'm smart, but it is a mafia. When you talk about the Clinton, you know, the, the, the whole organization, it's a mafia. Everyone was afraid of them, afraid to come yes, out exactly. and, 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 you know, in any way fight them. Anyway, I want to thank you all, Charlie Hurd, Joe Concha, and Tammy Bruce. And coming up, Democratic Congressman Bob Brady is in hot water tonight over allegations that he tried to buy off his political opponent. We'll explain that one next. Plus, we'll have the very latest on the Uranium One scandal. Stay with us. Welcome back to this special edition of Hannity. Tonight, we have yet another Democratic scandal to bring you. Fox News has confirmed that Democratic Congressman Bob Brady is being investigated by the FBI for his potentially unlawful involvement in a scheme to pay his 2012 primary opponent $90,000 to drop out of the race. Brady has yet to be charged, but the FBI has executed a search warrant of the congressman's uh, AOL email accounts with probable cause to believe that he committed election law violations. Joining us now with more is Salem Radio nationally syndicated host Larry Elder and Fox News contributor Kevin Jackson. All right, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I must tell you that I know someone uh, who years ago offered a job to a primary opponent in a state assembly race in New York. And as a result of that, he was indicted and he ended up going to jail. Now, if it is true that Brady did this, what should happen to him, Larry? He should go to jail, of course. But, uh, Judge, this is about Philadelphia. This is one of the most corrupt cities in the country. Uh, you have the, the DA who's just been indicted on 23 counts of corruption. Uh, you have the majority of the uh, traffic cops that have been uh, convicted of charges. Uh, they've got uh, people on city council on tape discussing bribes. It's one of the most corrupt cities uh, in America. So uh, I suspect the congressman is just following uh, the, uh, the, the role models who preceded him. <laughs> well, and uh, Kevin, your take on this? I think it's funny that we have this number. Remember William Jefferson? Uh, I forget his, I think his name was William Jefferson, the black guy who had uh, $90,000 in his refrigerator. Oh, yes, in his, it, it, it was in his freezer. In right? his freezer, <laughs> yeah. Right, in his freezer. Is, yeah. is 90000 the going cash. rate for, <laughs> yeah, right, cold cash. Is 90000 the going rate for slavery today? Uh, you know, the interesting part of this story to me, Janine, and Larry can certainly relate, we have a white congressman who wants his black counterpart, the guy who's going to run against him, not to do it. So he pays him off with a $90,000 He was African-American. That's my point. The, the gentleman, right. the judge that was paid off, happens to be a black guy. So that's Democrat politics. If I can't beat the guy, you know what I'll do? I'll just pay him off. This harkens back, and I know I, this is going to really make some liberals mad, but this harkens back to the days of slavery. $90,000 is a going rate for, well, I mean, it's true. Yeah, it is. It's sad. <laughs> I'm not saying it isn't true. It's horrible. Oh, I'm, I'm just saying it, that that's the going rate. And, and, and here's, here's the problem. The, the judge who thinks he's going to run for this office, he probably thought, I'm doing this on behalf of black people. So what he said to all the blacks who invested in his, in his race was, I'm willing to sell you out for $90,000 to pay off my campaign fees and have a little chump change left over. All right, Larry, <laughs> let's talk about the fact that it seems like so many Democrats are in trouble right now. You know, um, and, and, right. and at the same time, it appears that 
a lot of the criticism that was initially waged against or aimed at Democrats, whether it's Donna Brazile or, you know, this New York Times writer who says, you know, Al Franken's got to resign. And then the next day she says, I'm changing my mind. Is there a concern <laughs> right. on the part of those Democrats that the more they talk about corruption by the Democrats, whether it's sexual harassment or buying seats, that they're going to lose their politics uh, and their political uh, power in Washington. Well, what's happened uh, is that the Democrats have been exposed uh, as hypocrites on the issue of sexual harassment. You have Bill Clinton, who was credibly accused by three women, according to a book called No One Left to Lie To, of rape. You have Hillary, who was credibly accused by Juanita Broderick of intimidating uh, an alleged rape survivor, uh, and they got a pass. And that's not going to happen anymore. And in Philadelphia, as I mentioned, it's one of the most corrupt cities in the country. They had an 11-term congressman just indicted uh, and charged and thrown out of office. Uh, and the city is, uh, is Democrat Republican seven to one, a completely democratic city, totally run. They can do whatever they want. And I mentioned they had all these council persons on tape. Nobody got charged. Okay, but 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 <laughs> it's incredible. It is incredible. But what but what is incredible to me right now is that initially there was Kirsten G Gil Gillibrand, Gillibrand from New York, and she's like, "Shame on um, Bill Clinton. Right. We should have done something about it." And then when she's asked whether or not Al Franken should uh, resign, she won't answer the question. <laughs> right. Donna. Brazil Brazil comes out and she says, you know, this is horrible. What the Clintons did was horrible. And then all of a sudden, it seems that she's now trying to make nice with the Clintons. Right. There is this all of a sudden there's this change in the by the Democrats well, where they are not as critical of Democrats who are violating the any moral code or laws because it appears that right. it looks like their power uh, base well, is being they affected. Know, Judge, they don't know what to do. That's their problem. See, with conservatives, if these things happen, we react. We don't care who the person is. If Donald Trump had done what Al Franken or some of these other people had done, we would have reacted identically the same. Our moral core stays complete. To Larry's point, not only are the Democrats bad when it comes to the issue of sexual harassment, they're bad on every other policy. Look at their policy on immigration. You can find 50 high-level Democrats who said, we need to secure the borders for all the reasons that Donald Trump says. You could find 50 high-level Democrats during the time of Obama that said, we need to look at our Muslim refugee resettlement program, and so on and so forth. All they care about is who's in power. And so right now, they're living on the muscle memory. They don't know, do the Clintons still have power or <laughs> or do they not? And that's what you're seeing. They don't know for sure. Well, but 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 what it does seem, and, Larry, and, and, and you can feed off of that one, but it does seem that the Clinton power has has dissipated. But at the same time, there's a little reluctance to go all the way. Could go. it be that if a senator resigns like Al Franken, uh, that maybe, you know, if, if there is a Republican governor, the Republican governor gets to a point that this is not about women. It's not about their moral core. It's about rank politics. It's about power and money, and it has nothing to do with, uh, with right. a moral compass. Well, as Kevin pointed out, the Democrats don't know what to do, Judge. Uh, the, the revelations <laughs> of Harvey Weinstein, so blatant, they can no longer ignore them. If you're you going to go it. after Judge Roy Moore, how come you didn't go after Bill Clinton? How come you didn't go after Hillary? How come you haven't gone after uh, Al Franken? How come you haven't gone after John Conyers? They are now caught in their hypocrisy. And recall, after Kathleen Willey claimed that she was uh, groped by Bill Clinton, uh, a feminist named Gloria Steinem wrote a column and said, even if you believe what Kathleen Willey said is true, that's not sexual harassment because Bill Clinton stopped after he was told to stop. Are you kidding me? This is the pretzel into which the left twisted themselves to defend the Clintons, and now the chickens have come home to roost. And, and how is that going to impact the 2018s, Kevin? They're going to get crushed. You know, what's funny, every time I hear these leftists, they talked about the wins that they just recently had with the governors, which were expected wins, but they've learned, they've learned no lessons. And Larry's pointing out the hypocrisy. We do it every day on our radio shows and you name it, but the Democrats don't learn. And, and the problem they're having, Judge, is they still don't understand where the power structure is. So they're still trying to weed out, do the Clintons still have power? Does Obama have any power? In fact, 
There's, I, th I heard they're going to uh, bring Bill Clinton out to campaign. Somebody wants Clinton to campaign I, in 2018. I don't what? get it. Larry, do you get it? I mean, I don't bring know if out. the Clintons are in or bring out. Him. Obama, and by the way, Brazil went after Obama today. I yes. mean, it just keeps going. Right. They, don't, they don't know who they are. Bill Clinton is... Politically, Bill Clinton is dead man walking. He's toast now. <laughs> they can no longer ignore allegations made by Juanita Broderick. And more importantly, Judge, Hillary has still never been asked, to my knowledge, did you or did you not verbally intimidate this alleged rape survivor oh, as Juanita, Juanita Broderick, Broderick alleges? Broderick. I've what never heard shame. her ask that question. Well, you know why they're not asking her yeah. that question? Because she's still trying to figure out why she lost in 2016. <laughs> she came up with another excuse today. I can't keep track of it. And you know what? I keep telling her, just go back in the Woods, Hillary, enough. Well, and well was, Judge, Judge ahead, one, other quick, one other quick point. So why aren't they asking Barack Obama to campaign? That's what Donna Brazil is essentially saying. She, you know, it's funny. She gave him credit for saving America, but she won't bring him out to campaign. And she explained he lost all these seats. The Democrats have nothing. This is a fun time for conservatives. Yep. Enjoy, people. Yep, he lost all the seats and he left the DNC broke. Anyway, You're right. all right, Larry, Kevin, and thanks for being with us. And coming up, Hillary Clinton wants you to think that that Uranium One scandal is much to do about nothing. We'll explain why this scandal just won't go away as this special edition of Hannity continues. Welcome back to this special edition of Hannity. Hillary Clinton is once again downplaying the Uranium One scandal. During a recent radio interview, she had this to say. When there is a deliberate effort to you know, misinterpret facts, like the whole Uranium One uh, uh, cha charge, uh, you know, that, that is something that has been kept alive uh, despite constant debunking. Uh, similar to uh, the tragedy in Benghazi, where, uh, you know, I testified uh, at length. But as we've seen this week, we're only beginning to learn the extent of this massive scandal. Also tonight, the Washington Examiner is reporting, quote, newly filed court documents confirm that Fusion GPS, the company mostly responsible for the controversial Trump dossier on presidential candidate Donald Trump, made payments to three journalists between June 2016 until February 2017. The article continues, quote, the three journalists who were paid by Fusion GPS are known to have reported on, quote, Russia issues relevant to the committee's investigation, close quote, the House Intelligence Committee said in a court filing. According to the Washington Examiner, Fusion GPS is not denying payments to reporters, but it claims that the money was to help with research. Joining me now to explain is Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett and Fox News contributor DeRoy Murdoch. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to start with you, DeRoy. You know, every time I hear Hillary Clinton saying that Uranium One is nothing more than a deliberate effort to misinterpret the facts uh, despite a constant debunking, give me one person who debunked <laughs> Uranium One, and I'll, I'll go through my whole open on Uranium One, Molly 99, Russia, Iran, but you don't want to hear that tonight. Yeah, well, I think uh, that case has neither been uh, debunked or even bunked for that matter. Uh, you know, she's, she said, look, this whole thing has been fully litigated, which is incredible. It's not been fully litigated. There's been no trial. There have been no charges. The Republican Congress, you'd think by now, would have had at least one hearing on Uranium One. Why That's not happened yet. Why do you think they didn't? Now, back then, when the Republicans objected, and it was Peter King and Elena Ross Leighton, and they were like, wait a minute, you can't sell Uranium to Russia, and they were poo-pooed. Who was the speaker at that time? John Boehner. That's right. Okay. John okay. Boehner, yep. So, doesn't it make sense to you that because they were objecting to it, and they were on they were on House Intel and Foreign Relations, I believe. So, why would Boehner not be interested in doing an investigation? I don't know why these people didn't investigate. They should have done that. They, they certainly should do so now. I can't think, well, one thing that baffles me well, about they this, are I, doing I, can't, it now. I can't think of any 
uh, logical or innocent reason why the United States of America would turn over to Russia the control of 20% of our uranium, the active ingredient in atomic weapons. This isn't sending it to Holland or sending it to Paraguay. This is Russia with which we have at least an adversarial uh, relationship and, and certainly we went through the whole Cold War with them. I don't know why we would turn over 20% of our uranium. I can't think of an innocent explanation well, for this. Well, there isn't and one. It's for cash. I've not heard that. And you left cash. out the big piece. Yes. The Clintons got $145, $145 million. dollars in donations to the Clinton Foundation. And that's what we're How aware of. Who knows? Knows what other cash? And maybe like, there's even more. Yeah. Three people knew back then, covered it up, kept it secret, didn't tell Congress. You're talking and their names about are Eric Robert Mueller, Rod Rosenstein, and Andrew Weissman, the three people who are now investigating Trump-Russian so-called collusion. Stop. Say it again. Andrew Weissman, Rod Rosenstein, and Robert Mueller. These are people who covered up the Russian criminality that interfered with America's ability to preserve its national security assets in uranium. And they sold it out to the Russians. It is unconscionable not to have gone to Congress. They had a legal du duty to do it. They didn't do it. And the question is, did they also not tell the CFIUS committee, presided over by Hillary Clinton, which unanimously voted to sell uranium, 20 percent of it, to the Russians, jeopardizing national security. And one of the people on that CFIUS committee happened to be Eric Holder, who is the attorney general, right. who is the boss of all the people. He had to have known. So I would think well, he should have known that and, the, the and Russians we'll, were involved in extortion, bribery, uh, money laundering in order to get control of uranium, and yet this deal went through somehow. And right. what's amazing is, and it, the, the, the person who brought to the FBI the information that, hey, look, Russia is, has, has a whole operation to access our uranium uranium of extortion, bribery, whatever they need to do, cash. And the Sold FBI under. says, okay, we'll wire you up. Prove it. They did. He worked for them for six years. And after he finished working for them, they gave him a bonus of $51,000. And Loretta Lynch threatened him with criminal prosecution, which and is gagged illegal. Him. It's illegal and gagged him and said, don't you dare right. talk. What does that tell you? Well, and why did Jeff Sessions wait so long to finally lift the gag order? And why has Jeff Sessions been peddling the lie that, in fact, there's no correlation between the sale of Uranium One and the Russian racketeering scheme? Either Jeff Sessions is utterly ignorant of the law or he's gullible and naive as to the facts. And this or man, this Rod man. Rosenstein, who is de his deputy, uh, Rosenstein, his deputy attorney general, who was in charge of the Maryland right. office that took the plea that they took quietly on Labor Day but weekend. he's the Rasputin of the Department of Justice. He is manipulating Jeff Sessions and Sessions has no clue. And this informant apparently has something like six years worth of information on the Russian effort to get our uranium uh, documents, videotapes, apparently something like 5,000 different records. So he has a lot to sing about. And I hope the singing become, uh, begins soon. And well, I hope it be it's public. And because it should be it public. Needs we to need be to public. know about this. This is deadly stuff. I mean, look, the Rosenbergs helped Stalin get the bomb. They did it for principle. The Clintons gave the Russians access to 20% of our uranium for money. And they promised us that the uranium would never leave this country. Another lie. Another and lie. Another lie. Yes. And it left the country. And the amazing part of it is that they used a circuitous route. They said, oh, no license was right. issued for it to leave the country. Baloney. They did an amendment. A trucking company sent it to Canada. Then, yes. Canada sent it to Europe. And, then and at the Europe same and time, Obama was doing the uranium deal and sent $150 billion in cash and, uh, and said to Iran, you can do all of our medical, uh, you can make uh, uh, medical imaging and all that. Oh, yeah. You can be in charge of oh, it. It's a of wonderful it. thing, really. Isn't it? Just, just it, want them to be in charge of, right? It, it is Incredible. stupid and insane for any administration, including Obama's administration and Hillary Clinton, to sell the fundamental elements of nuclear weapons to your enemy. Yeah. And now we have to import uranium for our uses uh, because we gave so much to the Russians. And the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is complicit in this. Yes. Because they signed off on the third party that shipped it away to That's places right. we don't even know, including potential terrorists and nations and, and, like all right, Iran. Guys, I, I'd love to keep going on this because uranium is the essential ingredient for Molly 99, which is what is used for nuclear medicine. Yes. And there is none made in the United States. Right. We get it from also foreign the, countries. Even, even but I want to talk about fusion. Hold on, guys. Places. I want to talk about fusion 
Fusion GPS. Right. Uh, Fusion GPS, paid by Hillary Clinton, DNC, gets a million dollars, more than that, in seven months. They're paying reporters, reporters who were reporting on Russia. How do you interpret that? <laughs> It's amazing how supposedly all the Russian collusion was being done by the Trump campaign, and yet we find uh, the DNC turning money over to Fusion G uh, GPS. That ends up in the pockets of journalists who are covering Russia, apparently to this British spy who has had Russian sources. So again, if there's any Russian collusion, it seems to be happening on the Democrat side, not the Republican side. It was a crime for the, Rush, for, for the Hillary Clinton campaign and the DNC to give money to foreign nationals in exchange for information in a political campaign. It's two felony statutes. You're a lawyer, of course, you know the this quite well. As to the journalists, I don't know that it's a crime, but it's highly unethical. They need to be exposed and not kept secret. And, you know, those are checks. How much cash do you think ha they oh, handed yeah. out to journalists? Yeah, they, there are a lot of deep pockets filled with greenbacks. Now, what's interesting about Fusion GPS, that, you know, that law firm Perkins Coy was the funnel from the DNC and the Clinton campaign. We find out now that's one and the same. Uh, they then um, funneled the money to Fusion GPS, and Fusion gives it to this British buy, and then they, they go to... To, uh, to Russia to get all this information. Sounds like they, money laundering. Yes, it? yes, it does. It's like that? an organized criminal enterprise. It is exactly that. Rico, we, we Rico. recall we it. Rico I know it well, well. Yeah. all right? But we the truth... Yeah, racketeering. Mm -hmm. but, but the truth is, they fought this tooth and nail. They did not want to give this information over. And then when Congress says, House Intel says, we're going to subpoena bank records, they freaked. And right. they said, now we're going to give you what you need. What does that tell you? It tells me that they've had something to hide all along, and they're just letting it out drip, drip, drip as they're compelled to. And again, these I, I, the Democrats are very good at something in psychology called projection, where you have a particular characteristic, and rather than admit it, you throw it onto somebody else and say, you've got that problem. So these people engage in Russian collusion. Rather right. than admit it, they say, oh, you Republicans are engaging in Russian collusion. So it's really it's, it's a psychological uh, defect that has very serious public policy implications. As a defense attorney, I used to tell my clients, if you have nothing to hide, don't hide. If you have a lot to hide, invoke the fifth and gee oh wow that's what GPS officials did they invoke the fifth and the amazing part of it is fusion GPS I mean what did these guys do before they created fusion GPS what were they they were journalists journalists so okay. they know the business quite well inside and out inside and out and the frightening thing is you call it projection I call it you know make up the narrative buy the narrative Pay for the narrative and smear the other side. That's well, what they did. Well, as we <laughs> learned in Watergate, follow the money. Indeed. And you will find a myriad of crimes. So let's follow the money. And I guarantee you there are going to be a lot of crimes and a lot of defendants to go around. And in, that includes Hillary Clinton. And the interesting thing is that as the Clinton mafia starts to fall apart, you're going to find more people looking to save their own tails and... And turn. they'll start flipping. That's and right. Don't forget, $145 million from the investors of Uranium One into the Clinton Foundation. That's right. That we know dollars. about. Yeah, yeah, we know about. That's it's called right. pay to play. Enormous it's called bribery, money. mail called fraud, bribery. Yep. racketeering, Indeed. bank fraud. Indeed. Uh, the list goes on and Give on. Give me a grand jury any day. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Thank, Thank you, Delroy. <laughs> All right. There are a lot of reasons scandal-ridden Hillary Clinton lost the 2016 election, but the twice-failed presidential candidate is still refusing to take any personal responsibility. You won't believe who she's blaming now. That's next. You know, you're pissing me off. Welcome back to this special edition of Hannity. Hillary continues to add to her long list of excuses for why she lost in 2016. In her interview with Hugh Hewitt, Clinton pointed the finger at President Obama and even the mainstream media. Listen to this. When you run to succeed a two-term president of your own party, you have a history historical headwind uh, blowing against you. It is challenging when um, the press, and, and not just the press on the right, but the press in general, uh, decide that, uh, you know, my emails are the most important uh, story uh, of the campaign. And, and that clearly 
uh, was uh, just pounded day after day after day. Uh, and, you know, I take responsibility for uh, the mistake I made, but it was a, uh, you know, it was a pretty overblown uh, scandal. Meanwhile, former Obama, uh, Obama cabinet member Kathleen Sebelius is slamming the Clintons for their many attempts to cover up and attack those who accuse Bill Clinton of sexual misconduct. Watch this. Here we are 40 years later and very much the same atmosphere prevails. And it's about power. It's never been about sex. It's all about power. And men who have power over women use that power in all kinds of ways. I voted for Bill Clinton twice. And I, I think he was a, a really fine president, a brilliant guy, a committed public servant. Uh, but I knew, I mean, everyone in politics knew about his behavior and and we look the other way and I think there's a lot of soul searching to be done. You bet and that shouldn't happen ever again. Um, not only did people look the other way but they went after the women who came forward and accused him um, and, and so it doubled down on um, not only bad behavior but abusive behavior. Was that fair criticism of Hillary that she participated in that effort? Absolutely. I think it's it's very fair. Joining me now with the reaction is former Obama economic advisor Austin Goolsbee and founder and executive director of Turning Point USA, Charlie Kirk. All right, gentlemen, um, I'll start with you, Charlie. To what do you attribute this uh, change in uh, in tune by Kathleen Sebelius? Well, it's quite simple, and Tammy Bruce said it the best earlier in the show. Now that the Clinton mafia has been destroyed, all of a sudden, all these sexual assault allegations against the Clinton family are fair game. And you know what? President Trump said this on the campaign trail, that Hillary was instrumental in trying to silence and delegitimize the accusers against Bill Clinton. And, and you know, she said earlier, oh, it's somehow a two-term president's fault that I lost the election. Well, you didn't campaign in Michigan and Wisconsin. You got outworked. You're unbelievably uninspiring. Not to mention you were part of that administration as secretary of state you sold our uranium out for cash and you contributed to most of the scandals and so austin i mean what what is your take on this look kathleen sebelius is a you know she's a very bright woman she didn't do too well on that uh on that website but she's a very bright woman she's a strong woman she knows about sexual harassment this isn't something that's new why all of a sudden the turning point well, I, I think you got a lot going on in these. Well, one, one is this issue of why does Hillary Clinton say she lost the election? And the other is the kind of revisiting the sex scandals of the past. I think the reason why you're hearing a lot more publicly about that is you've got big public accusations against the president and and the the judge Moore, who's running for the Senate against Al Franken in the in the Senate. Uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein, this is a, it's getting a public moment, and I think that's why you're hearing more kind of soul-searching. I think a lot of people, as you heard David Axelrod in, the, in that um, segment saying, you got a lot of people doing soul-searching, feeling guilty of, well, why didn't, why didn't we do more? 20 years ago. Why, uh, you why know, is I got to tell you, I don't uh -huh. buy that. I mean, you know, if, if, if look, here, here, let me give you a perfect example. The woman who wrote the uh, op-ed piece in the New York Times saying Al Franken has to go and then had a change of, uh, of heart and the next day and says, nah, he really shouldn't have to go. It's base politics. When they realize that if Al Franken goes, then, you know, there's going to be a new senator and, you know, that the that the political uh, climate or the political balance in this country is going to change. And then when when Democrats say you can't believe a woman just based on an allegation. And yet when the president says the same thing, he well, is they, destroyed. I mean, it's it, it, people need to understand. Go ahead. Most of the Democrats, I think the first part of what you said, I, I, I believe I agree with, that there are some people who are, are finding a conflict between their political interests and their moral interests, let's call it, and that's a tough position to be in. That's absolutely not exclusive to Democrats. You see the voters of Alabama are very much put in that circumstance right, now. Right. I'll agree with you. Judge, Judge Moore is, but, is a person they're not comfortable with, but they're trying to resolve it. Now, I don't think that it at all has been the Democrats' approach to, to discredit the women in the 
Al Franken scandal at all. Al Franken himself. But he uh, can't. Oh, first, don't tell me Al Franken apologized because he didn't. He apologized for taking a photo, and there is evidence. His hands are on that woman's breast. So don't tell me he's a great no, guy. But, but, Hillary says, I forgive me, apologize. He didn't apologize for anything. The evidence is there. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, uh, Charlie, well, well, Charlie, one, go ahead. Well, well, one, one final thought on this. It's important to note that if Hillary Clinton was president, thank, th on Thanksgiving we should say thank, thankful she isn't, but if she was president, none of this stuff would be coming out. The media would not be publishing these exposés on Harvey Weinstein. He was a top Clinton fundraiser. He was a top Democratic Party fundraiser. These people are no, lo lo no longer politically relevant to the media or the Democratic Party, so now they're able to expose all this stuff. I if Hillary Clinton won the election, they would not be doing this sort of soul searching. They would be protecting the same behavior that's been right. going on in the Democratic Party I for 20 and 30 years. I hope that's not true. That, but that, Charlie, that might be true. Charlie, I hope that's not true. Hang on, Austin. Donna Brazil okay. today, the Bill Clinton should hit the campaign trail for Democrats in 2018. Are, are they schizophrenic? They can't figure out what they want. Well, I think Donna Brazil is saying that because she might have gotten some threatening phone calls in the last couple of weeks with all the revelations she put in her. She's trying to make up for all the things that she's told in her book recently. All right. Look, 15 seconds. If he seconds. comes on the trail, I don't think it's going to help. Austin, I don't think it's 15 help. seconds. Last word. Look, I just say nobody has ever lost the presidency while winning more votes than their opponent than Hillary Clinton did. So you got to at least cut her some slack. She's trying Wait a to second. Bill Clinton excuses. never won a majority of votes. Right, Bill Charlie, Clinton never won 50 plus one. In the we'll have right more of this special Trump edition not. of Hannity right after the break. Don't go away. Welcome back to the special edition of Hannity. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have left this evening. Be sure to watch Justice this Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. We have a jam-packed live show lined up with all the latest news from the week. Special guest Sebastian Gorka. Also, I visited the border a few months ago, and we're going to share that with you. We hope you'll join us Saturday night. In the meantime, have a very happy Thanksgiving. All the best to you. Laura Ingram is up next. <laughs> 